You just found the CNC Tech YouTube channel. Hey there, Chad again. Hopefully you knew that. If you didn't, welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna get into uh, a CNC Tech project. I didn't think I had any uh, great stuff to show right now for CNC Tech content, but uh, I do have two projects and, and the reason I, I didn't think of them or didn't think I was going to share them sooner was because I started them before I decided to dip into the world of YouTube and therefore I don't have any video of the beginnings of these projects. Nevertheless, I do think they're cool. I think they'll give you a good idea of you know what I do here. Uh, other than the wheel tech tool which if any of you don't know this is a scale representation of it it's a wheel simulator to size uh, wheel and tire combinations on custom cars more on that in the future so what I have here is a project for a friend of mine Sam Philibon he does a lot of late model general you know GM performance uh, work uh, LS stuff for a lot of years now he's moved on to the Gen 5 LT based uh, performance and so this is a water pump assembly from an L from a Gen 5 uh, small block this is not the LT1 pump off of his Camaro that we're dealing with here it's a uh, an L83, L86, LV3, uh, I believe that's a truck assembly. What is common between those assemblies is this impeller module. It is removable from the housing. And what constitutes this module is you obviously have your pulley uh, mounted to a common shaft that's in a bearing cartridge. There's a cartridge bearing in there and then you have your stamped sheet metal impeller. This is the exact same unit that's in his uh, Camaro. Therefore, the mounting and configuration in the housing will be the same uh, between the applications. Now, the challenge. Sam is trying to go as fast as he possibly can naturally aspirated with his Camaro before he does anything uh, with boost or any other kind of power adder. To do that, he wants to try to obviously reduce as much parasitic loss on the uh, engine as possible. And one of the oldest tricks in the book to do that is to put an electric water pump on that car. Because the LT Gen 5 series engines are so new, uh, I don't believe according to Sam the aftermarket hasn't caught up and there are no off-the-shelf electric uh, water pump assemblies uh, for these cars for these engines I believe there's some external uh, inline type water pump setups for them but nothing that makes the actual uh, pump housing assembly electric so to do that he had a Mazir uh, electric water pump on the shelf. I believe he had this from an LS application. This pump would have come with this impeller on it that sits in about that orientation right there. But and then I guess the other the other challenge is the bolt pattern on the Mazir pump because it was not uh, designed for this housing does not match the bolt pattern of the original impeller unit or housing. So there's several several challenges there. We have to adapt the bolt pattern to this housing. And then we have to figure out how to create an impeller for that pump motor that will work within the cavity in this housing. 
this cavity is fairly deep. It's, a, it's about an inch from the mounting surface down to the machined conical surface in the bottom of the pump that creates the, the, the tight tolerance clearance to keep the pumping efficiency up before the water you know, comes in and goes out uh, within the housing. I use SolidWorks to do all of my design work and I also utilize a 3D printer to do initial prototype work. The design and printing uh, work happened obviously as I said before I got into uh, the YouTube uh, platform. But what I do have to show you is the 3D printed parts. This is the adapter ring that I spoke of. This will adapt via these countersunk holes here. That's the bolt pattern for the housing. The tapped holes here are the bolt pattern of the Mazir motor. That solves that problem. But it creates another problem. To get enough thread engagement for the bolts, screws actually, that hold the uh, motor to the flange, this has to have some thickness to it. I try to go two to two and a half times the diameter of the fastener for my thread engagement. Uh, a little more when you're dealing with soft materials like aluminum uh, in this case, which is what the final parts will be made out of. So. That thickness adds to the depth of the housing, which adds to the amount of length or depth of this impeller that we have to make up so that the blades fit inside the cavity in the same location as the stock impeller so that it pumps properly. This is what I came up with. It's basically a three-piece impeller. The reason I did it in three pieces is because it's hollow. It is hollow because I wanted to save weight. The shaft that's in the Mazir motor is only about 7 eighths of an inch long. And this is quite an overhung load spinning uh, in liquid pumping with pumping loads on it as well. So I didn't want uh, you know, to create that, that moment on the end of the shaft and, and potentially have the uh, seals or bearings prematurely fail. Uh, in the motor or have this hub come loose on the shaft so there, there's several challenges there so you know I create the the depth so that the impeller gets to the correct location in the housing I try to keep the weight down and I am also going to create seals on each of these joints with RTV or I really prefer the right stuff in uh, applications like this. Uh, you know, you can you can use it almost immediately. It's it's pretty idiot proof. Uh, everybody's always in a hurry uh, to get parts assembled and, and get moving using them versus letting a, a standard RTV cure for the recommended amount of time. After verifying everything with the, the 3D printed parts, we went to the machine shop and we created the parts out of billet. This is 6061 T6 aluminum. It's a pretty common alloy that a lot of billet parts in the automotive aftermarket are, are made from. You'll see again the countersunk holes for the flat countersunk socket head screws that will hold the adapter ring to the housing. You have the tapped holes 
that also have a, a slight chamfer or countersink on them for lead in uh, for the socket head cap screws that hold the Mazir body to the adapter ring. And you'll also see a chamfer on the ID of the adapter ring. That chamfer is the receiver for an O-ring that's here on the Mazir pump fits in the corner between the pilot fit and the mounting flange of the Mazir pump. Hopefully I'm getting that in frame. This chamfer is sized based on Parker fluid power O-ring um, design criteria, design standards, so that when the pump is how uh, the pump motor is clamped in the uh, adapter ring, you get the proper compression on the O-ring to seal that surface. And I think I just wiped it off, but one of the ways uh, this is a this is a tip if you ever create a joint like this or a seal like this with an O-ring, if you Put a couple dabs of grease on the chamfer and then assemble the parts without any rotation. Assemble directly in, clamp them, un unbolt them, take the part out. You'll be able to see a witness mark in the grease to show where the O-ring is contacting and you should be able to see a wide a wider, relatively speaking, void in the grease to show that the round O-ring is compressing and spreading out across this surface. In this case, I had good transfer and, and it was right in the middle of the, tra of the uh, chamfer, right where I would hope it would be. We're using the factory embossed gasket for sealing of the adapter ring to the pump housing. This housing has a dial pin uh, locator in it for the stock bearing housing and that is to help uh, react the torque on the bearing unit. I'm assuming if you started to have a bearing failure you're not going to try to turn that bearing housing under the fasteners in the housing. We don't have that issue, but I do have a clocking uh, concern or, or goal, and I'll show you that here in a second. So I do have a receiver hole for that dial pin that keeps this clocked correctly in the housing. It also helps for assembly in the vehicle. Uh, because you have this pilot fit and that pin, when this goes in, on the pin all your bolt holes are lined up so you can easily assemble and disassemble this under the hood of the car. Likewise the the Mazir pump has two ears that are close together and not spaced evenly like like the rest of them. That also gives you clocking capability and so when you clock the pump correctly. It basically keeps your electrical connection in a location that I chose would be away from the water or the radiator hoses, coolant hoses, and hopefully in an area easy for Sam to connect to, connect to his wiring harness. Socket head cap screws would hold the, the pump to the adapter ring and create your seal. As I mentioned, all of the parts, including the new impeller R6061T6 aluminum, uh, we shouldn't have any problem with corrosion or anything like that in, in the coolant. I combined not only the shape of the Mazir 
impeller, the, the shape of the fins on the impeller. But I also uh, mimicked the taper or the conical top. Uh, the Mazir, you can see maybe, are flat on top. And the CNC Tech impeller is shaped very similar to the original impeller and that mates correctly with the conical machine surface in the pump. So hopefully we have an efficient pump here. All that's left now is to deliver this to Sam, let him get it installed on the car. Hopefully the weather here in southwestern Pennsylvania breaks and the tracks start opening up and Sam can get to it. I'm going to try to get out to the track with him so that we can do the initial testing. Uh, obviously the initial fire-ups will be in the garage. We'll check for leaks, we'll check for balance, vibration, uh, or lack thereof. And if everything goes well, uh, obviously in the garage, we'll get out to the track and see if she can pick up some ET uh, with the parasitic loss being eliminated from the water pump assembly. There you go. In a nutshell, that's that's a it's been a pretty cool project for me. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.